time for Animaniacs, and we're zany to the max. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca, and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Animaniac songs. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too. The pinky and the brain, the pinky and the brain. One is a genius, the other's insane. To prove their mousy worth, they'll overthrow the earth. For this list, we're looking at the best musical numbers from both the original beloved series and the reboot. If we were totally insane and left your fave off the list, be sure to let us know in the comments. Alright, let's check it out. Number 20. Reboot It Animaniacs has always reveled in meta humor, and its 2020 revival knocks so hard on the fourth wall that it probably cracks with this ditty. We ran out of ideas for fresh new shows. So Hollywood did the only thing it knows. The first episode of the new series concludes with this song, similar to Good Morning from Singing in the Rain. Reboot it, renew it, reshoot it, redo it, and reuse it, retool it, abuse it, just do it. If you wanna make some easy cash, just recycle and rehash. In it, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot sing about shows and other properties that have been rebooted, revived, and remade. For a guaranteed rating smash, pick it up out of the trash, come on, just reboot it. Their tongue-in-cheek mockery of the very practice that got their own show brought back is hilarious. It features everything from Dot making eyes at David Duchovny to the ghost of B. Arthur. Way to come back in style. Number 19. Multiplication While sitting in class with his siblings, Yakko is asked by their teacher, Miss Flamille, to multiply 47 times 83. Sounds like a song cue to me. Yakko then launches into a musical number explaining to the audience how to do the multiplication problem step by step. His breathless run-on singing is not only entertaining, it's also educational, at least for the kids and not so mathematically inclined adults watching. Seven times eight is 56, which as you know is just five tens plus six, and so we put the six right here in the tens place left of the one, carry the five like we did before. There are also some fun little moments like Yakko interacting with portraits of Albert Einstein and Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton multiplied a couple times two, times two, times two, times two. And if this catchy song doesn't stick in your head, you can always follow Follow Yakko's advice and buy a calculator. Number 18. The Senses Song Only the Warners would think to sing a song about the five senses, set to the tune of the Irish Ballad by Tom Lehrer. The sense of sight is what guides us right when we go out on walks. The sense of smell's the way you tell that you need to change your socks. Well, them and the writers of Animaniacs. Although the Warners begin the ballad by listing the five senses of the human body and what they do, things go off the rails quickly. The sense of taste of fiction waste, which makes five senses and all. There's a sixth sense too, but it's hard to explain. It's a psychic connection inside of your brain. After discussing the supposed sixth sense of ESP, the Warners begin singing about anything and everything that has the word sense in it, from dollars and cents to a sense of duty. A sense you can smell like cologne from Chanel or the sense of expensive perfume. There are sense of flowers we hope overpowers the kitty box next to your room. Eventually they and the audience realize that the whole thing has been nonsense, but it doesn't have to make sense to be a great song. Starting to turn out completely all wrong, and it's time that we end it because it's too long. Because <gasps> it just doesn't make any sense. Number 17. Bonding. Pinky and the Brain may be out to take over the world, but they've got musical chops every bit as much as the Warner siblings. Hello, Pinky. It is a pleasure to meet you. That is the fanciest microwave I've ever seen, Brain. In one episode of the revival, Brain builds a robot in his image, which he begins treating like a son. What follows is a surprisingly sweet song about Brain bonding with his robot child and engaging in diabolical twists on typical father-child activities. Bonding. Extract its uranium core. Pinky even gets a few verses to express his jealousy over feeling left out of their fun, as well as lamenting his cold pizza roll. Oh, it's still ice cold in the middle. Sentiment isn't usually the Animaniac style, so bonding makes for a refreshing change of pace, while still retaining a humorous twist. Number 16. Suffragette City 
primarily sung by Dot, Suffragette City begins as one of Animaniac's typical historical ditties, detailing how American women lobbied to secure their right to vote. It's insane for us to think today that women used to have no say in matters of the government. It also shows the early suffragettes with superpowers for some reason. Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Susan B. Anthony. Sojourner Truth. However, after Dot learns that cartoons don't have the right to vote, the song quickly turns into a crusade to secure the toon vote. No animation without representation! Featuring cartoons from a plethora of Looney Tunes, Warner Brothers, and Hanna-Barbera characters, Suffragette City is a catchy call to action, as well as a hilarious take on civil rights. And that's all, folks. March, march, march! For your cartoony right! Ah! Number 15, The Planets. Short and sweet, this song features Yakko in a spaceship, listing the planets of the solar system in order based on their distance from the sun. Closest to the sun is the planet Mercury, next the shrouded planet Venus is as cloudy as can be. Oh, and he also mentions Pluto, but we're not going to touch that whole debate. The gassy planet Jupiter's as big as planets come, then there's Saturn with its mighty rings made up of tiny crumbs. Snappy and memorable, the planet song jaunts along so fast that it's over before you know it, and also before Yakko's named all of them, considering he forgets one in particular in order to end the number on one of the show's typical subversive innuendos. You forgot your anus. And on that note, we'll say good night, everybody. Number 14, I am the very model of a cartoon individual. While on a pirate ship, a pirate captain is surprised by the Warner shooting him with a comically large cannon they seemingly created out of nothing. I am the very model of a cartoon individual. My animation's comical, unusual, and whimsical. I'm quite adept at funny gags, comedic theory. I have read from wicked puns and stupid jokes to anvils that drop on your head. To explain this phenomenon, Yakko proceeds to sing a song parodying the I am the very model of a modern major general from the Pirates of Penzance. I can make my face all mean and really give you quite a fright. Ah! Then make up with flowers made of real exploding dynamite. Yakko and his siblings demonstrate various cartoon physics, such as body alterations, pulling large objects out of nowhere, and even stopping time. Then I sneak up and utter start and take my hands and honk their nose. Wonderfully self-aware and memorable, I am the very model of a cartoon individual is the very model of an Animaniac song. Number 13, The Monkey Song. From the very first episode of Animaniacs. That's it! From the start, this melody set the tone for many of the tunes that followed, as it's based on a classic song. In this case, Monkey, popularized by Harry Belafonte. One Monday morning, I got up late, and there were these monkeys outside the gate. The Animaniacs version sees the Austrian psychiatrist, Dr. Scratch and Sniff, contending with the Warner siblings, whom he calls monkeys pestering him, leading to a chase around the Warner movie lot. The visuals feature cameos from nearly every other main character in the show, and the tropical beat and repetitive chorus help make the song a catchy one. Monkeys dance, then I dance too. Don't know what to say, the monkeys won't do. Number 12, Variety Speak. While waiting to see the aforementioned psychiatrist in one episode, Yakko asks to borrow a paper as part of a gag that Wacko is a dog and isn't housebroken. Play dead. Uh, is this the end of Little Rico? <laughs> My fellow Americans, I am not a crook. Good dog. When Wacko is puzzled by the language used in the entertainment paper Variety, Yakko and Dot launch into a song explaining the strange lingo often employed by Hollywood. In Hollywood, they have a different language that they speak. It's spoken by those folks who went to school for just one week. What follows is a snappy song that takes shots at the movie industry and those who review films. Full of meta-references and entertaining lyrics, Variety Speak is a wonderfully memorable musical parody of Hollywood. If you want the poop or you need the scoop on Hollywood Town this week, you're gonna have to learn to talk that Variety Speak. Number 11, A Quake, A Quake. A quake, a quake, the house begins to shake. You're bouncing across the floor and watching all your dishes break. Set to the tune of Robert Schumann's The Happy Farmer, A Quake, A Quake is about the 1994 Northridge earthquake that occurred in Los Angeles, California. Whose fault? Whose fault? The San Andreas's fault? Cause Mr. Richter can't predict they're kicking our asphalt. Despite being about a natural disaster, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot managed to sing a song that's both funny, as it comically exaggerates the consequences of a quake and the dangers of living in California, while also being surprisingly informative. 
California's great. It's such a lovely state. And every lawn is sitting on a continental plate. The rapid fire lyrics and visuals are a treat. And the simple melody will make you want to shake at least one part of your body. Number 10, a zit. When Dot learns she has a zit before a photo shoot, naturally she freaks out in typical Warner fashion with a song. A zit, a zit, my fans will throw a fit. My gorgeous face of charm and grace has never had a single trace of anything that's out of place. Her lyrical lament over acne is all too relatable, and she's soon joined by Yakko and Wacko, whose attempts to make her feel better don't go over well. We all get zits sooner or later. Some are big and some are greater. Yours looks like a meteor crater, but, but we know it's not. Thanks a lot! Things then take a strange turn when her zit turns out to be alive and just as embarrassed to have her growing out of him. A duck, a duck, I can't believe I've got this great big thing I don't know what, a little girl with a pixie cut. The duo eventually comes to like each other and spends time enjoying activities together before the zit inevitably dies a week later. Surreal, surprisingly dark, and featuring a great tempo, a zit is far from a blemish on Animaniacs. Number 9. What If Animaniacs songs often take inspiration from older show tunes, but this song from the revival deviates from that trend in a big way. An adorable pop song, What If features Dot transforming the world into a cuter version of itself. Dot's lyrics about making mundane objects, animals, and locations a little more kawaii are both creative and super catchy. The song concludes with the Warners getting sick of the experience and doing something incredibly gross to make it all stop. Still, while it lasts, What If is like a cross between a K or J-pop song and a Lisa Frank store, and it's so sweet you'll want to listen to it until you get sick of it yourself. Number 8. The Ballad of Magellan There once was a man, his name was Magellan, a Portuguese skipper, the girls found him cute. Led by Yakko, the Warners sing this educational song about the titular Portuguese explorer to the tune of the classic Western song, Get Alone, Little Doggies. Chronicling the famed explorer's voyages to locate the East Indies, the Ballad of Magellan pairs the rollicking melody with comedic lyrics that make light of the lengthy and arduous journey by showing Magellan's increasing frustration at his lack of success. We'll be tired, I'll settle down, Magellan. Put down that X, there's no time to despair. With a surprisingly dark ending, given that they cover Magellan's death at the hands of islanders. Magellan was pleased as the natives drew near, but then someone shouted, I think they're attacking. Magellan said, what? And got hit by a spear. <laughs> the Ballad of Magellan marries the Warners a reverent mockery, an old melody, and educational material, which all make for an excellent Animaniac song. Number seven, I'm mad. I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm really, really, really mad. Another musical interlude featuring Dr. Scratch and Sniff. This time, the distraught doctor attempts to herd the Warner siblings into a day trip to an amusement park, with Yakko and Dot arguing the whole way and Wacko complaining constantly. Every time we get into the car, it's so much work. It takes us 20 minutes while you're driving me berserk. The song's length, back and forth rhyming dialogue, manic energy, and tone that evokes a feeling of increasing madness or irritation help make it an especially memorable experience. I'm Mad was actually aired in theaters as a theatrical short before appearing in the show proper, making it one of the few Animaniacs appearances on the big screen. Are we there yet? I'm tired. I'm hungry. How far? Number 6. Catch-Up Song In the first episode of the revived series, the Warners are understandably a bit out of touch after a few decades. What's that? Oh, that's right. You're from the 90s. However, Yakko eating a tablet leads to a musical number catching up themselves and the audience on the intervening time. Taxis are Ubers, the stars are YouTubers, Neil Dyson gave Pluto the axe. The cell phones got smarter, the oceans got hotter, the global economy collapsed. The humorous look at politics, pop culture, and technology of the last 20 years is great and brings the Animaniacs into the 21st century. Don't leave our homes thanks to Amazon drones, they track what we do through our watches. However, due to it supposedly being written in 2018, they ultimately decide to speculate on what the next two years will be like. 
leading to increasingly outlandish ideas. We have chips in our brains, we no longer feel pain, there are worsening climate disasters. Now we live underground and we can't make a sound less, we anger our polar bear masters. A mix of old and new, the catch-up song is the perfect transition between the show's classic roots and its modern iteration. Ratings depend on knowing the trend. We're all caught up, that's how this song ends. Number 5. Yakko's Universe. It's a great big universe and we're all really puny. We're just tiny little specks about the size of Mickey Rooney. Likely inspired by the galaxy song from Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, Yakko's Universe sees the title character singing first about planet Earth, then the Milky Way galaxy, then the entire universe. Cause there's a hundred billion galaxies that stretch across the sky filled with constellations, planets, moons, and stars. And still the universe extends to a place that never ends, which is maybe just inside a little jar. All while emphasizing how small we are in the grand scheme of things, and taking repeated shots at Mickey Rooney's height in the process, before being joined by Wacko and Dot for the finale. Informative, enchanting, philosophical, and ultimately optimistic, Yakko's universe is a rollicking romp through the cosmos that you won't soon forget. Though we don't know how we got here, we're important part here, it's a big universe, and it's a Number 4. The President Song I ho do you know the names of the U.S. residents who then became the president? Arranged to the tune of the famous opera overture turned popular American marching song, the William Tell Overture, the President Song features the Warners singing about each president of the United States of America in chronological order, at least up until Bill Clinton, while also touching on world or national events the head of state had to contend with. Up to bat comes old Abe Lincoln, there's a guy who's really Thinking. Kept the United States from shrinking, saved the ship of state from sinking. At times informative, while others comedic, the President's song is an irreverent look at the history of the U.S. and its leaders, couched in a familiar patriotic melody that you may just find yourself singing to yourself the next time you hear the theme it's based on. The next president to lead the way, well it just might be yourself one day. Number 3. Wacko's America while receiving an unusual lesson at school where they play a version of Jeopardy akin to the real game show, Wacko is asked to name all the United States of America and their capital cities. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Columbus is the capital of Ohio. While playing the fiddle to the tune of the famous folk song Turkey in the Straw, Wacko proceeds to do just that. Using fun facts about the locales and some creative license with pronunciation and word order to get the whole thing to rhyme. South Carolina with Columbia down the way, and Annapolis and Maryland on Chesapeake Bay. They have wonderful clown chowder. Wacko's America combines an energetic and familiar song with instructional visuals to create a song that had us tapping our toes and helped many of us pass U.S. geography. That's all the capitals there are. Huh? Number 2. Animaniacs Theme We're saying it to the max So just sit back and relax You'll laugh when you come back We're Animaniacs As great as all of these songs are, it doesn't get much more memorable than the Animaniacs theme song, as it begins basically every episode. But we break loose and bend the moose and now you know the plot We're the Warner siblings sing this incredibly catchy song, providing exposition on their basic characters, as well as those of the rest of the main cast. Peppered throughout are clever rhymes and gags that break the fourth wall, which really helps set the tone for the entire show. Plus, there's a variable lyric towards the end that changes between episodes. This isn't just the most memorable song from Animaniacs, it's also one of the catchiest cartoon theme songs ever. Those are the facts. We're totally Here's a show's name Those are the facts. Hey. Want more Mojo? Ms. Mojo produces original, high quality pop culture related videos on all your favorite movies and shows. Plus, celebrity news, fashion, lifestyle, and more. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Ms. Mojo. My name is Sam. My name is Eliza. And I'm Emily. I'm Rebecca, and welcome to Ms. Mojo. If you want videos on all the best reality shows, teen dramas, Disney movies, and sitcoms, be sure to check out Ms. Mojo for new videos every day. Number 1. Yakko's World And now, the nations of the world, brought to you by Yakko Warner. One of the most famous and mimetic songs to come out of Animaniacs, 
Yakko's World features Yakko Warner singing the names of the countries of the world in rapid succession to the tune of Jarabe Tapatio, also known as the Mexican Hat Dance Song. Honduras, Guyana, and still, Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and Ecuador, Chile, Brazil. The song proved so popular, it was referenced several times in the show itself, such as the similar song that sees Yakko try to sing all the words in the English language. Welcome back. Yakko's now at the L's as he tries to sing all the words in the English language. A slight mistake at the F's. Here's what it looked like. Facial and faction and fractal and fraction and fraudulent fragrant frappe. Frankincense, 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 shoot, yada yada flamme. Yakko's breathless delivery may contain several omissions and errors, and certainly is not up to date, but it's still immensely fun to sing. Plus, Yakko's actor Rob Paulson has sung an updated version more recently, with some of the countries created since it was originally written. Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Yugoslavia, Crete, Mauritania, then Transylvania, Monaco, Liechtenstein, Malta, and Palestine, Fiji, Australia, Sudan. I know it's only number two, and it doesn't teach us anything important like the countries of the world or anything, but I will never get the Animaniacs theme song out of my head. So, how about you? Which Animaniacs song is your earworm? Be sure to let us know in the comments, or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton, or on my YouTube channel. Totally insane -y. See ya.